the dumbest drama I have seen lately, a.k.a. look at me, HLTV forums, you're the snowflakes now. I never used the word snowflake. I think it's stupid. Uh, it went out with Fight Club. But um, now people will use this clip, unironically, to think I, I am in the chudosphere and I use the word snowflake, uh, which I don't. But anyway, we're going to talk about HLTV. Now this time, it, I'm going to do the surprising thing. Because, you know, back in ancient Greece, <laughs> they did lots of things in ancient Greece, of course, lots of things. Uh, one of the things they would do uh, is when they would argue on occasion, they would, uh, what they would do is they would take the guy and go, you believe the opposite, but argue my point, and I believe the opposite, and I'll argue your point, and our intellectual honesty will compel us to do the best job, and somewhere within that, we can maybe get to the truth of the matter, and if we lose the debate, we won't feel so bad about losing, because we'll have been the ones that made the great a compelling argument from it, right? So, you know, it was like, they're quite clever like that, right? The, the old ancient Greeks. And also, let's not forget, that was, uh, what was it? They, they, I remember, pretty sure it was Athens, the, the, those wacky Athenians. But I do distinctly remember when I went to one of my girlfriend's classics lectures, uh, the lecturer, op it was about sex in ancient Greece. And uh, the lecturer opened by showing there was some like piece of graffiti or I don't know, something in a book or something. I can't remember the exact sourcing. And uh, it said uh, in ancient Greek, obviously, a woman for show, a boy for sex and a melon for pleasure is what they is what it said. So, you know, ancient Greece. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to be adopting the HLTV defense. The HLTV defense is uh, they got accused of being racist. We all know that. We've all seen them out there, haven't we? The people accusing other non-racist people of being racist. We've seen them, yeah. So they sat on HLTV and I was like, Oh, wow, what have they done now? Because obviously HLTV, um, as I've said in the past, it usually doesn't have the highest editorial standards. We kind of know that from previous criticisms. And so I thought, what the fuck have they done? And then I went and read the article, and I was like, what? <laughs> That's not racist at all. And so this segment is going to be about, well, A, how the CS community has changed, and not for the better. Uh, I'm going to have to write an article about this, I think, and put it in the Dawn of the Dumb series, because, unfortunately, the CS community are just... It is just a carnival of cretins right now. It's, there's no point. May as well be fucking Rocket League or Overwatch. Like, they're just it's just embarrassing. When we used to be the cool ones in esports, to see us like this now is, like, dreadful. The other thing it's going to be about is kind of, like, you know, how people are just so thirsty and horned up for drama on the internet. Particularly now, because what have we had? We've had a roster mania. Everyone's building new teams. No one's going to tournaments. So it's like, there is no drama. Thorin hasn't tweeted anything that people don't like for a few weeks. So what are we going to do? Who are we going to get? Which which are we going to burn? So everyone's all fucking horned up because, you know, the esports fans, as I've said many times, the average esports fan doesn't care about esports at all. They don't care about esports at all. They care about the drama. They care about the happenings. They care about the game. They care about, you know, it being able to engage with all the shit on the internet. The actual sport itself, the actual team, the actual roster moves, also, they don't give a shit. What they do know is that if they hang around long enough in a sort of fledgling, unregulated scene, there'll be drama. Someone's going to do something stupid. Let's also be honest, right? Can you imagine if real-life TV, outside of the news operated like esports does high pressure environment no auto cues you've got to give opinions loads of untrained staff coming in being given a microphone and it's 12 to 16 hours of live broadcast a day Can you imagine if tv worked like that you imagine the shit you would hear you imagine the shit you would see people are going to trip up people are going to get emotional hot mics are more likely to happen and so everybody sits gazing not because they care about the game but they know if a player molds or if calls them a noob or a commentator gets hot mic'd or bank wants to banks wants to smash their heads in smash their heads in we all have a fucking we can all we can all engage with the resulting drama pretend we were there the whole time and so i'm going to tell you about this article and the stupid reaction 
to this article. Now, one of the things HLTV has always struggled with historically is to produce very good opinion pieces. Even back in the days when they had opinion piece writers, they were never like great or strong. It was basically Lurpis, why Fifth Lauren is shit. Uh, because I have a personal thing with Fifth Lauren. That was pretty much the extent of it. Then we've had a few. I mean, you'll have seen me highlight one. Why all of a sudden this format in du uh, this format in Riyadh is a good format <laughs> that we've never pretended was good ever before. But what they used to have is they used to have a guy. I believe it's pronounced Stitch, but some people have. I've heard people say Stick, like with a hard K, because it is like. S-T-I-C-H, but I always thought it was just Stitch. So I've never heard his name vocalized beyond people saying Stitch or Stick. I'm going to say Stitch. If you want to correct me, mate, you're more than welcome. But anyway, they used to have this writer called Stitch, right? And basically, he used to be at HLTV, and he used to write in a particular style, you know, which was, dare I say it, Richard Gonzo Lewis-esque, in the sense that when I used to write my articles, I used to really inject some flair and flourish into it. I used to use phrases in there that weren't necessarily appropriate all the time, you know, to try and rile people up and just to stand out from the crowd. The esports tradition was always to write very dry articles, even your opinion pieces, why I think this player could be bad, but also he could be good, so this is a completely tonally neutral article, and it's not worth your time to read. And eSports fans would go, wow, what an article, get a load of that. And then I came along in 2005 and started saying, why this player is fucking dog shit and should retire using a series of very vivid images uh, to explain how shit they actually are. And people went, that's brilliant. I've never read anything like that. And the other 50% said, wow, kill that guy, <laughs> right? So, and so in that moment, you know, you could say, boom, you know, that was that was one of my lasting contributions to the space. Now, whether whether Stitch knows it or not, Stitch uh, is sort of one of my you know, children, one of my many progeny. Basically, in esports, I'm like that massive cunt in Prometheus that has the gacky drink. And, ah! and just goes full leprosy into the water. That was me. That was my esports journalism. I look like that now. Not like the big guy in Prometheus. More like the gack that went in the water. But that's what I did with my work. And Stitch might not know it. Stitch might not know he's part of that process. But he is. And so he writes opinion pieces with, you know, kind of a little bit of edge and cheeky linguistic stuff in there, right? That's what he does. And so he, he they brought HLTV brought him back. He used to be there in 2016, I think. And then he left in like 20. He left just before they got bought out by Betters Collective. And now he's back because they've got the money to spend. And they brought him back. And so he wrote this article. Five teams we wish were erased from our memory. And he says, here it is. It's eternal dust shine of the spotless smoke mastermind. As we go over teams that we wish we never knew existed. God loves all his children, whether four-legged, two-eyed, one-finned, or sliding along the grass like a reptiloid of genus Smuya. So we are taught. Now, by the way, I saw an HLTV thread going... Uh, how can this article be good if it's got a typo in the opening sentence because they didn't know genus was a word and thought he meant to use the word genius to refer to Smoothie? So we're already off to a fucking, you know, uh, you got to know your audience sometimes, Stitch, my mate. You've got to know. That's true, by the way. Uh, that, that, that's a real thing that happened. You have to know your audience and sometimes you might just want to include, you know, some... Get, get, you know, get in the thesaurus and dumb it down, you know what I mean? Like, type. Anyway, but we are also taught the inverse. God will destroy the wicked, the depraved, and the foolish. They will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Uh, by the way, one of the things I used to do a lot of, believe it or not, was quote the Bible in my early articles, because it's just straight fire whenever you want to make a point. And you're just like, listen, not my opinion. God's opinion. I got a best friend. So it's all fine, right? Like, you just... Yellow wolf there. But you you, you know what I mean? Like, you can argue with God now? Uh, don't think so, homie. So anyway, that which is an affront to the holy is an abomination to nature. It is to be purged, destroyed, extirpated. Better if it never existed. 
It's a dark, rainy day in the foothills of the Appalachians. I'm told they have to pronounce it that way now, even though everyone in Europe calls it Appalachia, but whatever. And your author is feeling downright apocalyptic. The movie Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind, banger, is on the television. Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, Kirsten Dunst, Eliza, Elijah Wood and Mark Ruffalo are all in the prime of their youth. For the uninitiated, the plot revolves around two ex-lovers using an experimental mind-altering technology to erase memories of each other and thus move on. Something feels wrong. The movie brings up painful memories. A 2015 night in San Jose, California with Hunter Thompson vibes. Twitch after party, strolling the Cali streets with an N.A. orgona, colours swirling, telling Monte Cristo you don't recognise him even though you very well do, and watching the indignation rise. No, no. Wrong memories. Throw those under the dirty esports rug. Right? So, you might not like it. You might think it's cringe. I mean, real real talk. Generally, I have a tendency to move away. I've moved away from injecting myself too much into my articles. But it's a phase we all go through while we try to find our voice. He is a creative writer. And don't ever change. Stitch, that's my words to you. Don't ever change. It doesn't matter if people don't like it. That's not the point. That's not why we write. Writing is a creative process. You can't win them all. That's not what the creative process is about. If, if it was, what we would do is, every time we wanted to write an article, we'd pull in a focus group of plebs. We would go, I want to write this article, and I've got a couple of opening paragraphs. Which one speaks to you? And the plebs would go, I like the one that hurts no one's feelings. Job done. And that would be that, right? But we don't do that. It's, it's a reflection of you, your soul, your experiences, your beliefs. You know, but uh, it's also about what what it is you want to say, a topic. That's what it should be. It's not about what other people think, uh, just to get that there. And also, as I've said many many a time, what's the worst thing you can do in esports with the plebs and the dregs that call themselves fans that we all pander to? Because if they're not here, apparently, the whole thing's going to collapse and we owe it all to the fans, but not one of those fans pays a fucking penny. You're starting to see the problem? Well, listen, the worst thing you can do is have a fucking opinion. That's the biggest crime. Just have an opinion they don't agree with. Well, Richard Lewis's articles are great, but every take he's ever had is shit, and he should shoot himself right between the forehead. Like, why? Because you don't like an, an opinion, or maybe a series of opinions. Why would my opinions, from my vantage point, be the same as yours? Think about it, you fucking idiots. No, they're not going to think about it. That's the last thing they're going to do. So we get to this. They talked about Splice with Machine Gun. Now, regular... No Majors Club viewers will know all about Machine Gun. Machine Gun was the Mongolian player that Splice signed. And if you remember, that was Davy Splice. And so, whether Machine Gun knows it or not, Machine Gun's like the fifth Beatle of the No Majors Club because Davy's told so many stories about what a great guy he is and how Davy was helping him adapt and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was one of those stories that sort of came out of left field. But actually, in retrospect, as much as I used to criticise Marty Laserlips, who's still in there, he's still in eSports, still doing his thing, this lineup is actually super interesting when you go and look at it. So, you know, Davy... Aria, Cillian, Crucial, and Machine Gun, right? Now, we're in the future now, right, from when this article was published. I'm just going to read you the racist bits. Oh, no, here comes the Twitch ban. Ah, don't worry. This is like James Randi getting up on stage and eating those homeopathic sleeping pills. Nothing's going to happen because it isn't racist. After failing several qualifiers, the team parted ways with Davy and Machine Gun, with issues with the language barrier being notably raised for the Mongolian player. While European Zoomers these days are fairly English competent, it turns out that bringing in a Mongolian mad lad who prefers throat singing from the step didn't have quite the same levels of compatibility, right? Okay, there you go. Now, keep in mind, we do also know anecdotally that he didn't know a lot of uh, English he was learning it. Well, I mean, why would he, right? <laughs> like, you know, and, but, you know, Davies talked about it. So that's racist point number one, okay? Throat singing is racist. You can't say it about Mongolians, okay? Then, as you will notice, there's a, there's a thing called a caption underneath that picture there, and it's been edited. But I knew this was going to be a dumb drama because I've just learned how to negotiate the Scylla and Charybdis of fucking esports these days. Like, it's just, oh, that's, that's going to be a drama. I'm just, uh, let, let's go down the middle. <laughs> it's going to be fine, Richard. And once again, I wasn't in it. 
and I didn't tweet anything about it, even though I, I never tweet now. And three years later, with that, since I made that resolution, people are still saying his Twitter account is a man, that of a man child, and I'm blocked for no reason. It's like. I just don't use it for anything except posting my work now, really, guys. Anyway, so the original, okay, because this is the second racist part. There you go. Boom. Here it is. This was the original racist caption. What was thrown into Google Translate more often? Rush B or nearest fermented mare's milk? Now, nearest fermented mare's milk, if you don't know, fermented mare's milk is the uh, sort of national drink of Mongolia. Now, there's a lot of contention, actually, because there's two different types. I went and researched it, right? There's actually uh, three different types, in fact. There is a Turkish type of fermented mare's milk, a Mongolian type of fermented mare's milk, and obviously a Chinese type of fermented mare's milk. And the Chinese say theirs is the OG, and the Mongolians say theirs, theirs is the OG, and the Turkish people say, listen, I don't really care about any of that shit. I, nom, 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 this is delicious. Shut the fuck up, right? So that's kind of where we're at, right? I, I went away and fucking read about it, right? There's some beef about this, right? So, so anyway, <laughs> it like, but... I just want to make clear, right, that, yes, sometimes making stereotypes about people can indeed be racist. I want to point out, a lot of people said, uh, and this is where we get into adult territory, so we're going to have to be adult for a moment and not giggle, right? Some people compared this to certain uh, foods being associated uh, in the 1800s post-slavery with, with black people black people with with the uh, people that were you know former slaves in america now here's the difference to all you uneducated peons out there those particular food types were used in caricatures to denigrate successful post-slave communities and uh you know towns that's why because the people who used to have slaves didn't want the slaves without them to do well because their entire argument well one of their arguments was that no like they, they, they certainly couldn't flourish without our guiding hand that was a racist ideology at the time so no it's not the same <laughs> um because there isn't hundreds of years of a cartoon being used to present you as racially inferior is there i don't remember that I, ne I never got that about mongolian mare's milk fermented mare's milk i never got that one right so it's just a national delicacy right i just want to underline i also did some research right about you know is this could this be racist has fermented mare's milk or throat singing ever been used to denigrate the Mongolian people? Because if it has, then yes, we would indeed have a point that at the very least it would be racially insensitive. So, I did the research. <laughs> I went to cheese.com. First place you go if you want to know anything about cheese. The Mongolian uh, version of the beverage is called Airag. Right, I went to cheese.com, you can see here. Uh, it explains how it's made. Mongolia is a land of rich culture and is known for its unique culinary offerings. Uh, among these, Erag, often referred to as kumis, that's the Turkish, I believe, uh, uh, kind of common uh, version of it in other Central Asian countries, holds a specialist pl uh, special place. This fermented milk beverage has been integral to Mongolian life for centuries, offering refreshments and a glimpse into the country's cultural heritage. Because indeed, you know, there was the Mongolians quite famously had nomadic, you know, multiple tribes before they were all unified, you know, going way, way back to ancient history. There were nomadic people. It would make sense to drink mare's milk because you've got mares, you've got horses, you know, with you, right? So it, it ties in to the rich rich history of that region so i was like okay well if cheese.com says it <laughs> if cheese.com says it then it's fine but okay look if something was racist right and they didn't want you talking about it do you think they would advertise it on their official tourist page <laughs> and here it is the one and only air rag things to know and this is from discover mongolia Right there, it is. They have a page on it, on the tourist website. So I'm I'm going out on a limb to say that actually Mongolians are quite proud of fermented mare's milk. Hey, listen, you want to try this shit and learn about it? Absolutely, have at it. Right, there isn't a page saying the dark racist history of air rag, is there? Right, like okay. So then I was like, well, the throat singing. 
right? Uh, you know, we after after Dune, because the Sada car are doing it. They, you know, they're gonna fucking. There's got to be something racist about the throat singing. Has to be. So I looked on the other official tourist. Uh, <laughs> This one called Mongolia Travel and Tours. Guess what they had to say about throat singing? Traditional music and songs from Mongolia are specific by many ways. Uh, that means in, but we'll let you off. Uh, especially throat singing, which is called Kumai and Morin Kerr. Uh, the Kumai is an overtone singing, throat singing, in which the singer produces two distinctively audible pitches at the same time, including a low pedal note or drone derived from the fundamental frequency of the vocal cord vibrations and higher melodic notes that result when the singer's mouth acts as a filter, selecting one note at a time from among the drone's natural overtone series pitches. And it's racist. Doesn't say that. And then it tells you where you can go if you want to fly and learn about it. Right? So again, I'm guessing HLTV haven't published a racist article, and what they have done is make an explicit reference to a type of culture in reference to a Mongolian player. Now, HLTV is formerly a racist shithole, uh, for want of a better phrase. Uh, their forums, even as late as like 2020, were an absolute sewer. And every time you went on the front page, someone would have found a way to bypass the fucking filters or to do something in such a way that a word looked like another word because of the automatic cutoff in the titles. And he, 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 and Jonathan E would come and get them. And then everyone would be like, wow, Jonathan E's terrible. I found it incredible that HLTV was, again, to use my chud lingo, triggered by this article. I was like, what? Anyway, it started, I think, with this. One article we wish were erased from our memory. Blatantly racist. What the actual fuck was that article? That felt like a really long and out of touch shit post. Somebody says I didn't see any racism. Somebody linked them the 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 racism. And then so, then they replied, not with, that's not racism. Objectively isn't racism by any conceivable metric. Uh, they replied with, thanks. That's extremely disappointing to see from HLTV. Hopefully, Jonathan E. will ban the writer of that article. One writer we wish was erased from our memory. All his articles are unreadable, like the cringe and slang is so over the top. Uh, that was one of the wilder articles uh, I've seen on here. Didn't feel like an article and more like a blog. By the way, this is how you know, if, if you're dealing with a moron, this is one of the things morons will always say. That's not an article. It's a blog, right? Ask them to define the difference between the two. <laughs> Go on, do it. They can't. Why? They're morons. They don't know what they're saying. They they know that the word blog and blogger, the words blog and blogger, have been used to de, like derogatory uh, in a derogatory fashion about certain writers and journalists. But they they don't know. They don't know what it means. And so they go, ah, oh, that's just a blog. That is blog is an abbreviation of weblog. Weblogs were typically, you know, almost like personal diaries or whatever but they were also just reporting about things that were happening you would just like write up that this is happening today and this is my view on it it's a blog it's a blog it's a personal blog then you would write an article this is what's happening and this is my viewpoint of it that's an article okay we'll define the difference now you don't understand you don't know what you say anyway i hope hltv delete it or at least edit it and henceforth proofread this guy's articles five times if you're gonna let him write the moment I read how this journalist wrote about Mongolian stereotypes to that degree, I knew I was in for a wild ride. By the way, there's nothing else in the article after that segment. Honestly, doesn't feel like it should be an HLTV article. Feels super out of place how quick it went from the usual professionalism. Literally opens up by talking about fucking the Bible, the genus of Smuya being the lowest form of life on the evolutionary totem pole, which didn't upset anyone. And how he fucking called, he said to Monte Cristo he didn't recognize him one time. Super professional. Even when biased articles appear, a biased article, we all write those, they don't do it uh, to the length of this writer, laughing my ass off, right? Then he said, lineups such as Echo Foxes should be best left to pub stomping 13-year-olds in matchmaking and throwing every racial slur in the book at a bunch of underdeveloped teenagers, casually implying the Echo Fox players were all racists and yell at teens was a weird line. Again, re read, read the room. The joke's on you, not on them. Anyway, so there was that, and I went, okay, not a problem. It's HLTV. You know, there'll be someone on there that's upset. Not a problem. 
New HLTV article. Why the fuck did HLTV hire this stitch guy? Ha, ha, ha. The article is both poorly and awkwardly written. He is clearly trying to use the Gen Alpha, Gen Z type vocabulary. He didn't catch that. Because uh, he's... I don't even think you are Gen Z, aren't you? The tail end of millennials. Stitch, I don't know. Anyway. And the jokes he makes are cringy and out of touch. I guess they're trying something new, but it's not working. He's a legacy hire. Used to be a writer for HLTV like 10 years ago, right? Took a few years break and came back earlier this year. Every article he's written has been the same type of garbage until now, where he de decided to sprinkle in racist jokes for some fucking reason. Guarantee if a new junior writer started writing these pieces, they would have been fired instantly. Well, that's good. That's great for the space, isn't it? That would be a good thing. Anyway, the article feels like a forum thread, blah, blah. Okay, well, that's got to be the end of the HLTV drama. Uh, surely. Uh, so article writers are allowed to be racist. Had one of us written this, we'd be tenured. Definitely wouldn't, but because again, it wasn't racist, but whatever. Uh, literally, it's incredibly distasteful and disrespectful. I can't imagine they posted it. I get that some teams were weird or kind of doomed to fail, but come on, no reason to be so hate-filled, disrespectful, and worst of all, corny and unfunny nearest fermented milk a little joke here and there is fine with me but you are correct we would have been 10 years 10 years is the stat like that hltv's equivalent of a permaban sounds like an hltv user coupled with an actual hltv writer wrote this i mean yeah that's true that's literally what happened he uses the site and he writes for the site nailed it i'm not waste spelt wrong wasting my time reading an article with this name but why is it racist, though? <laughs> I want in on the drama without any of the basic legwork of reading one sentence to get involved emotionally with the drama, said the moron. Where's the racist part? Somebody did that, right? Yikes, lost all respect. This is not too professional. No, no, it's, it's a joke. Stereotyping entire races equals racism. That didn't happen. All right, well, that's definitely the end of the HLTV drama. No, you will notice as well, because it was a drama, HLTV left all these threads up because they, they've learned about the Streisand effect down the years. So good, good on you. We're, we're, we're evolving. There you go. Another one. Resign immediately for posting this racist garbage. Anyone who reviewed this article should be fucking embarrassed for letting this get published. HLTV desire, decided to hire a new hip writer. Guess I was not expecting all the vocab he was using. Ha, ha, ha. Even though, yep, yeah, Stitch has been on HLTV since 2012. Stopped maturing and developing mentally as soon as he signed up. Right. So I sat and I watched and I thought, 100% this is going to go to Reddit. There's no way it won't. And so the article, and this is again, this is how thirsty people were for drama. So the article gets posted on Reddit, right, just in and of itself. Because, you know, it might be an interesting article. You might want to read about five lineups that was sort of so bad, it, it'd be good to forget about them. So the article got posted. And here it begins. Dumbest man alive had some strong opinions. Who approved this awful opinion piece? Maybe it's just me, but I expect a lot from HLTV articles. And this is just DeSerto level stuff. That's award-winning DeSerto. <laughs> That's award-winning to Soto. I know, I was there. My stuff helped win them the award. It's incredibly obnoxious. 100% on point about HLTV and expecting more from them. What exactly, what more should we expect from HLTV? They don't write, they used to not write articles. In fact, there was a period of time where the only articles, the only thing that wasn't a, a pre-agreed upon news post, because remember, they didn't even used to break roster moves. The only thing they used to write articles about was they would take their statistics from their database and write articles of like you know certain player has fallen off we've got the numbers to prove it and that is dry as a you know rich tea biscuit they're not fucking you know they're not one exciting articles this is about having a bit of a creative uh flourish maybe it's just me but this seems like really terrible writing. I have no problem with negative pieces, but this feels like really unnecessary shots at players and a terrible attempt at humor. There you go, right? So Reddit today, this is relevant to later in the stream, if you're watching on YouTube, a video that'll be out in a day or two, Reddit agrees today that saying bad things about players is bad and must be stopped. 
Interesting. We don't wish this roster removed uh, from our memories because it was particularly offensive, but more because it was frankly stupid. Haha, <laughs> American stupid. Really in-depth analysis. If you interpreted it that way, you might be a stupid American. Hate to break it to you. Despite what the internet may be showing, your day in and day out normies are still out there. Is this written by a 15-year-old chronically online who uses the word normie in an article? By the way, the word normie is like old 4chan lingo. It's not something the Zoomers invented. That's very much boomer talk. So pick a generation and put him in it. Came here to see if I was insane. Always a good place to go to Reddit if you want a fucking quick sanity check. I'm feeling a bit mental. Where shall I go? Reddit will help. Uh, came here to see if I was insane after reading like the first section on Splice and comments about Machine Gun and nearest fermented mare's milk was so fucking distasteful laughing my fucking ass off. Didn't this guy just get rehired back to HLTV? By the way, this is your classic Reddit pleb. Knows nothing about the article, hasn't even read it. Knows nothing about the person that they're calling to be fired or punished in some way. Just a drama tourist. What they've done is they've skim read all of the other comments and then they've amalgamated it into one comment their comment that they then post just so they can get involved and maybe get a bit of karma they're completely uninformed you can tell right uh didn't this guy just get rehired hltv and this is the first impression piece that he's written he even left an equally obnoxious zoomer what the fuck is blood smoking self-aware comment in his own article terrible the concept for the article is cool but jesus this is the worst thing i've seen on hltv in ages even the mod who posted it Right? So the mod posted it, right? Who, Bonnie? He read it, posted it, thought, I'll share this on Reddit. Then when people said, um, I want to, uh, hi, I'm a fucking loser Redditor. Can I have part of the racist drama, please? He went, yeah, I saw the article title. I'm super interested, but I just noticed the comments about me. Whatever, homie. I see you. The tide is out. You've been swimming naked. Fire whoever wrote this. This is an HLTV forum post. Uh, no organization has been more consigned to the waste bin of CSGO history than Optic. What is this nonsense? I mean, it's an opinion. They're not in CSGO. So, uh, it's fair, right? Glad to see I'm not the only one who found this article unprofessional. Blah, blah. Anyway, right, okay. That was just the main piece. So, you go, right. You've said your piece, Reddit. You've said your piece about the totally racist, horrible article. Because they were pissed off at the article, they downvoted the thread. <laughs> and because they downvoted the thread, along came what I like to call a super Redditor. You can see them because, you know, they have slightly longer neck beards, slightly longer katanas, and they wear two fedoras because their fucking mega brain is so big and swollen, they can get one onto each fucking lobe. The mega redditor, the proto redditor, the super redditor, they are here. And by the way, you can't spell predator without redditor. But they realized, well, we're not going to get a witch hunt going without this. We're not going to get a witch hunt going if nobody reads the thread. What are we going to do? So what they did is they took a screenshot of the article, even though, by the way, the moderators are against witch hunting on this sub, apparently. They then reposted it with the classic, if, if, by the way, if anyone on Reddit says, why aren't we, or should we, or can we take time, it, it's a witch hunt. Okay, that, it's the language of the Redditor, right? So why aren't we giving enough attention uh, HLTV having an article in their front page with a good amount of disrespectful and slightly racist comments towards professional players. Why aren't we? Why why aren't we more outraged about this? Well, you did have a Reddit thread, but you downvoted it, you fucking moron. So that's problem number one. But you know, maybe four or five HLTV forum threads, all the comments in the article. But why aren't we? And of course, it's like pack animal mentality. So obviously, when a super redditor with his two fedoras and slightly longer katana comes along what what they do is all the other little rank and file redditors who only have one fedora and maybe it's not even a it's not even a katana it's what, what are them little ones called is it a wakizashi or something i don't fucking know anyway they've only got one of them and they go yeah why aren't we teach us the the, the, the ways teach us the ways or oh, giga redditor so again i'm not even going to read all of this this is already going to go on too long you can just see the article was deemed strange and racist 
and they tagged in Professor so Stitch would get in trouble as if his own editorial team hadn't read the article on their website, you fucking moron! Of course Professor's seen the article! Ah, yes, I work at a website. I will never check the fucking website. That would be silly. Like, what are you... Quick, tag him in! Tag him in, he's missed it! He's missed... No, he totally saw it, you fucking idiot. If this is what the article writers are like, I can understand why YouTube TV comments are the way they're at. Yeah, no, there is a new author with a weird style who's written three articles in total. Who is the culprit here? There are just... Th these are just missed jokes. I don't think he's intentionally trying to be a dickhead. Look at this. Mega thesis about it. Why HLTV comments are good. So, these are all the comments. Again, not going to read them, not going to get sucked in. They all say the same thing. Because it is the thirst for drama. HLTV are racists. HLTV confirmed. Didn't even have to check who wrote it. Uh, to know who he was, an absolute cretin. From the account exposing cretins, that laps is me. <laughs> that isn't me, by the way. I want to make that abundantly clear. He pretends he's me, and I, but I, by the way, keep it up. Expose them cretins, but that isn't me. Uh, and he does post that a lot. That's his, like, catchphrase. He'll, like, reply and go, this person is a cretin. P.S. I'm totally not Richard Lewis. I am Richard Lewis. It's great. That's how, that's how, that's how much, I, like, psychological damage I've done to Reddit down the years. That people are LARPing as me. Anyway, <laughs> people complaining about NA brained. It's the status quo for Europeans to be racist and xenophobic. It's, uh, blah, blah, uh, stitch. Why is NA brained in there? Um, I actually got banned for speaking out against this on the forum. She didn't, of course. I've just shown the posts. Bigots are writing for HLTV. Ha, 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 ha. As a Mongolian, I totally agree this was uncalled for. Don't know, you might want to talk to your tourist board because they're putting that shit out there, mate. How did they post this shit? This is horrible. The worst article I've read on HLTV. Not only is it racist, but it's, uh, it's way too long for nothing. Not even that long. It's literally about three paragraphs for each of the five teams. So anyway, okay, right, right, okay, good. We've got it out our systems now. But you see, it's not out of our systems now. Why is it not out of our systems now? Because Stitch, went, right, well, two things happened in the aftermath. And by the way, HLTV, I want to say credit. You kill this one with silence. This is the babbling of uh, a babbling brook of stupidity. It's morons getting restless because they're going to have to go offline for a couple of days to hang out with Grandmama over Christmas. Uh, I want one more drama before 2024, please, please. You just kill this one with silence. You just totally ignore it. And, you know, you sort of didn't do that, but you kind of did. You didn't make a statement or an apology. So that's great. But anyway, two things happened, right? So the first thing was HLTV said, editor's note, this is a satirical article and does not reflect the opinions of HLTV. Oh, this one takes me back. Back to my halcyon days when I had my own column. By the way, you want to talk about unprofessional? Because my gamer name was Gonzo, my weekly column, one of the first weekly columns in eSports, not the first, I do believe, uh, Carmack had one, one and uh, there used to be a writer called Zex, and he had the Zex files, which no one remembers, but I do, Miss you Zex. Uh, and then there was me and I was called Gonzo right that was my gaming name somewhat cringe you know we got rid of it years and years ago but that was my gaming name Gonzo and I remember brainstorming with uh, Corin Cole and Max Goody Silver and uh, hey Rich we want you to write a weekly column got any ideas for what it should be called and uh, I was like right well I only want to write about the CD underbelly of esports so i want to call my weekly column gonzaria <laughs> and the utter insanity is i was such a big draw in writing terms at the time they agreed and not only did they agree they drew up graphics which was an std cell with my head on it <laughs> gonzaria right so, and it was a green thing, and I used to even edit in on the graphics, like little taglines about the column. Gonzaria, everyone wants a dose. <laughs> That's legit. That was my weekly column about esports, by the way, about fucking esports. What Cadred quickly realized was, oh, yeah, Richard's mental. Richard's, like, really swinging for the fences with these articles. By the way, they're all straight fire. Not all of them, some of shit, but I had to write occasionally topical stuff that I wasn't interested in. Nature of the Beast, weekly column, you're writing a deadline, some of it's going to be garbage, that's, that, that's the world you live in. But anyway, a lot of it was straight fire. 
And I've kept them all. I've got every article. I'm putting them on my Substack at the moment now. Cadred very quickly realised we're going to have to come up with a fucking disclaimer for Richards because he's mental. And I was going like, well, listen, it sort of under like, undermines my work a little bit if you put like this does not reflect the opinions of Cadred because I'm a writer at Cadred. And then they went, well, yeah, but you're not the editorial board. I'm going, yeah, but you approve my work. <laughs> you approve my work. So, if you disagree, just don't approve it, I guess. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, we want we want it out there. You know, we welcome all opinions. So, anyway, this took me back, is what I'm saying. I was like, oh, Stitch, you really following in my footsteps now, brother. I remember the fucking, the unique disclaimer. That sort of means you've made it. Now, by the way, this could all age terribly, and in 10 years, you could actually be a bona fide racist if the cultural pendulum swings so far that suddenly uh, there are BuzzFeed articles about the racist history of fermented milk, me fermented mare's milk, and this could age terribly. But uh, and I'll be in there with you, buddy. They'll toss me in the basket of racists as well. But right now, I'm just going to say where we are in the cultural zeitgeist of 2023, None of this is racist, that like you said. But what Stitch also did, he changed the supposedly racist caption, and he said, like jokes meant with respect about a national delicacy, machine gun felt lost in translation on Splice. And that's quite a clever way to address it. I've changed the caption. If you did find it offensive, I've changed it. And maybe it was just lost in translation. Maybe you didn't get it. Let's not make a big drama about it. So what did Reddit do? They made a big drama about it. Because <laughs> that's all Reddit's good for. Not because anyone actually cares about, like, Mongolian people or Mongolian culture being denigrated. They just want to burn a witch today. So, we got another thread. And they screenshotted the altered caption and uploaded it. And then, imagine getting called out for racist jokes in your article. And your response is to shadow edit one of them to you guys just didn't get it. And then, they recycled... All of the same comments they did in the other thread. Did a child write this article? This article is cringy and unfunny. He tries too hard. Yeah, but hang on. We're complaining about him being a racist. Not whether or not you like the article. So, you know, oh, but it's just like, say, every time someone's held up on Reddit, it's like, this is a bad person. I know from experience. Uh, what everyone does is they go, what's he be what are they being called out for? All right, they're being called a racist. Well, I've got no evidence of that, and I don't think they are. But let me tell you why they're rude. <laughs> you know, and it's like, I always use the example. It's like Caesar getting getting murked up by the fucking uh, his senators. Everyone has to have a stab. Like, yeah, get him, get Richard. He blocked me for no reason. It's like, we're not talking about that. Usually their articles are pretty good, but this one was just bad with no redeeming qualities and should be removed. Excellent work there. HLTV is a fucking cesspool. <laughs> All right. People are like HLTV is 4chan level. The worst forum out there. Also, by the way, when people complain about 4chan, they're literally complaining about two of the kind of sub forums on that website. But whatever. Cringe. Blah, blah. Casual racism. All these comments here that are downvoted. Comments saying it was a good article. Right. So anyway. So, okay, that's the end of the story, right? Well, not quite. A couple of other things to add. You see, everyone else who works in this industry with, with like, kind of a working brain uh, was just sort of, like, laughing about it. Like, I saw this from uh, Drowlon, and we all know in, in our community, and he's like, I'm crying at the Reddit thread and all the people seeing Stitches work for the first time. Uh, truly timeless reactions right and obviously the bottom line is like yeah you just i don't know you've just been exposed to a writing style uh you didn't like uh launders i went to write stitch isn't racist in the comments but then i remembered how stupid everyone is right <laughs> exactly see launders a regular watching the comment uh, watching the content he gets it and blair who is going to be featured heavily in this stream today blair is certainly uh, my spiritual wingman on this journey, uh, said my brain started to turn to mush reading that thread. Uh, so, it, like, here's the thing. Isn't it interesting that none of the industry people thought this was racist? By the way, spoiler, we're on super high alert because it's our jobs, it's our livelihood. We're the ones who sort of take an active role in making the space more welcoming because our livelihood depends on it. As Yinsu alluded to in the chat, not all of us. But theoretically, 
And so why do none of us think it's racist when we have this vested interest in doing so? Why are people sort of defending this HLTV writer in the industry? We've got no reason to. In fact, given that HLTV is very often a vector for criticism, particularly the forums, but even in the articles, you know, you might think you might want to get a few free punches in. But no, they don't because it simply wasn't what they said it was. Now, look, listen, I'm all about appreciating other people's point of view, as I talked about with Ancient Greece at the start. I do try and put myself, and more often as I've got older, into the minds of other people to see if there's anything about their perspective that I can understand and kind of assimilate, metabolize, and then maybe change my view. One of the great myths about me, uh, apart from Dreamhack Hell in a Cell, is that I can never admit I'm wrong and I've never and I don't evolve my opinions. I think you have to be more and more conscious of that actually as you get older. It's very easy to get entrenched into a mindset and not really realize you're there. And then suddenly you wake up one day, you're 65 and you're an arsehole. Right now, I'm <laughs> I'm 39 and I'm an arsehole, but I'm trying to always, you know, evolve the type of arsehole I am. So I'm always listening to like, you know, fucking other people's opinions and trying to get their perspective and so it might just be the case that the average person the average reddit user including you know the redditors and the the mega redditors right <laughs> it might just be that they think food-based stereotypes are racist no matter the consequences and so okay well you know listen if that's the standard if that's the energy you want to take and bring to the table then yeah let's do that and let's see if that idea if that thought process will anchor itself in the cultural zeitgeist and become the norm problem i know reddit doesn't feel that way how do i know reddit doesn't feel that way a quick search for the word baguette you see, the French are makers of bread. And quite famously about French bread, uh, they it's long, it's very phallic, right? And, and it, <laughs> this part hopefully isn't phallic. It's crusty on the outside. If, if that is happening to you, maybe you've been reading too much gonzeria. But the point is, they make these big, long sticks of bread called baguettes the french are known for it now here's the thing if calling french people baguettes is insulting if linking and if what we know from that article that linking people to their cultural delicacies and things they're known for is racist and racially insensitive then linking French people to baguettes by logical extension would in and of itself be racist. Because remember, there's no history of fermented mare's milk being used to denigrate Mongolians in the same way there's no history of the baguette being used to denigrate French. They just make really good bread. It's, by the way, it's like the French called uh, English people le roast beef because it's a joke about our food. But actually, roast beef is banging, isn't it? You sort of know that. I've had roast beef in a French restaurant. It was delicious. Well, you're welcome. It's the one, it's our one cultural export, right? So it's a bit of banter. And by the way, French and English people get to talk to each other that way. And no American gets to fucking say anything about it. We got actual history. We were beefing with each other before your fucking country existed. And it's all in good faith until it fucking isn't again, right? That's our relationship, yeah? Don't you fuck around with it. So, Vitality signed a baguette. So somebody gave a baguette to Vitality four years ago. Said, ha, 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 sign this, sign this bit of bread, you're French. Ha, 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 sign the bread, sign the bread. That's what they did, right? Now, okay, so can I go up to, can I go up to Machine Gun? I've been drinking this fermented mare's milk out of this, like, you know, decorative mug. Will you sign the mug? Will you sign? Well, racist, that is, mate. What the fuck are you? Read the room, you racist cunt. Oh, fucking hell. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I thought signing food was okay. My bad. Apex sees the baguette god. Because every time Apex makes a face, they talk about the baguette. He's burnt the baguette. He, 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 you know, he wants a baguette. It's like, okay, well, this, this, I've never heard Apex complain about this. In fact, he's quite actively lent into it. He tweeted about it, but whatever. Okay. 
when you're playing a major and forgot the baguettes in the furnace, that's his famous slap in his forehead thing. Uh, someone got their baguette signed by Envy. This is seven years ago. Ah, you're French. Sign the bread. Sign the bread. When the baguette hits just right. Apex forgot the baguette is in the furnace again. If Apex left his baguette in the oven, what did Kenny forget? When the baguette is absolutely perfect. When the baguette comes out the oven just right. When the baguette comes out perfect. When you save the baguette from being burned. One eye on the prize. One eye on the baguette. It's going to be a baguette feast tonight, boys. That's a link to a fixture page of French people playing other French people. Shocks and Kenny speaking a dialect of baguette. I will never hit a shot like that again. Uh, content warning, baguette noises. I'm guessing that's a French person mocking the French accent. because He's got vitality flair. And they are talking French in that clip. When you didn't pay attention to the baguette in the oven. When the baguette burns in the oven. I think this baguette ate config. I don't know what that means. Kenny feeds config his baguette. Right, okay. That is an entire page. There's more. That's an entire page of linking French people to their food that they're known for, for their national dish. Is it racist? Of course it isn't. No one would take offense at that. In fact, Reddit, I know, doesn't take offense at it. Because you never shut the fuck up with that terrible fucking boring joke. I mean, at least throat singing is original. At least you don't get to say that every fucking week. Ah, sign the bread! Sign the bread. So obviously you can see Reddit really cares. Really cares about this stuff. I'll also just add, if you go on HL TV uh, and see how they describe Americans, guess what? Burger. That's just it. Burger is code for Americans. Now listen. Ah, never, never heard that framed as racist, actually. Americans do like a good burger. They make the best burgers in the world. Yum, yum. What's the problem? I don't get it. So that was proof irrefutable at how drama thirsty everyone is at the end of the year. There's just nothing going on. Stitch not racist, right? Definitely swung for the fences on the article, made some creative decisions that, you know, not everything's going to land. It just is. It just do be like that sometimes when you're trying to write interesting pieces. The average HLTV fan knows fuck all about writing, doesn't understand any of it. Essentially, it must. Uh, one of the things that I quickly realized somewhere along the, the line is it's actually awful to be an esports writer because you are writing for an audience that will never understand. If you do your best work or, your, or do something creative or interesting, they will not get it. They they want to be served the same slop every time. They want to be served this article every time. The player you like on the team you like is really, really good by me, a boring cunt. That's the article they want to read every single fucking time. And then they go, I clapped, I clapped, I did. That's that. That's all you ever had to do, by the way, if you want to fucking be the most popular writer in fucking esports. It's what lots of people did. They all fucking cruised, right? They all cruised on it. But no, if you want to write something interesting, a little bit contentious, that's what it is. Now, as we'll get to, uh, and this is going to be frustrating for the YouTube people, because the video is probably going to end here, but Reddit decided there and then you must never, ever, no matter what, criticize players. That is bad. And so now we get to another drama where Reddit had a very different opinion, which surprised me. 